I think it's become clearer that fairness is overrated. The idea that we should always give two sides equal weight and merit does not reflect the world we find ourselves in. NBC now putting those words into practice, the network under fire for deceptively editing the 911 call that preceded a fatal police shooting of a teenage girl in Ohio. Police body cam video shows a Columbus officer shooting 16-year-old Makia Bryant as she was lunging with a knife at another woman. But the part of the 911 call that NBC aired left out the part about the attempted stabbing. Officer Nicholas Reardon, who joined the force in December of 2019, was responding to a 911 call. We need a police officer here now. And here's the actual 911 call. These grown girls over here trying to fight us, trying to stab us, trying to put our hands on our grandma. Get here now. Did he see any weapons? Sam, do you see any weapons? We need, a, we need a police officer here now. Joining me now, Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist, and Joe Concha, the Hill Media Opinion columnist. Both are Fox News contributors. Joe and Molly, thanks so much for taking the time to join me tonight. Great to be here with you. How are you, Ben? So I, I have to ask for your reactions to this situation with NBC. It seems to me that so many of our corporate media entities out there are interested in fomenting racial rage as opposed to actually depicting the true story about these different events that happen that certainly are concerning, but are not depictions of race-based violence on the part of the cops against various people in America. Molly, what are your thoughts on this? So much of the privilege that media figures have had has been built on this idea that they that they take and synthesize information and they provide context and help provide a shared set of facts for the American people. That's not what they're doing anymore. They have moved into straight up propaganda. In this case, it does seem that they are desiring to foment racial division because that aligns with the political goals of their favored party on the left. But they do it in so many ways. I think people need to stop being surprised when they see it happening because it happens with everything, whether it's the Russia collusion hoax or the Kavanaugh hoax or the Covington hoax or deceptively editing Governor Ron DeSantis's answer on vaccine distribution. It's just what they do as a matter of course. And this week we've seen it that they will even do it when it's something as fraught as racial division. Joe, I think that this is a situation that unfortunately doesn't seem like it has any real solution. Is there a way to get these media entities to start behaving more responsibly and not, you know, trying to push this toxic, racist approach to every frame of every story? Then they got to be called out, but they got to be called out by their own. I want to see the op-eds in the New York Times, in the Washington Post, by CNN, people mm -hmm. they don't expect to criticize them, NBC in this case, because that's the only way you're really going to get their attention. You mentioned about how the media uh, is serving to divide the country further. Oh, yeah. Gallup had a poll last year, 80 3% of Americans believe that the media bears the blame for division in this country. Think about that for a second. In 1976, media had a 72% approval rating in the Cronkite era. So today, NBC had to put out a statement to apologize for not issuing that full 911 call because that's the real context when you hear a girl pleading she's trying to stab us or when they actually edited out the knife in the hand of the attacker in the original report. We should have seen apologies. We should have seen retractions. We saw nothing. All we saw was punditry on places like MSNBC, which seemed to s actually justify knife fights uh, going on between kids. This was a one-way knife fight, A, and B, there was actually a 13-year-old girl in Cincinnati that was stabbed to death by another 13-year-old. This isn't playtime now, and this is a very serious situation that we have here in terms of police and race and tensions are high. NBC had to get it right. They got it wrong. And to Molly's point, they didn't get it wrong because they made a mistake. They, they got it wrong because they were trying to push a narrative, a dangerous one that could end up getting people killed. The, you mentioned that uh, commentary on CNN and MSNBC. Uh, let's run that and get some reaction. What if it were your daughter? What if it were your child? What if it were a member of your family, your neighbor, uh, in a uh, essentially a, a teenage fight, a schoolyard fight. I remember fights in, in even high school or even younger than that where a kid brought a pen knife or something to school and teachers were able to defuse that and they didn't have guns. 
Molly, I, I listened to this and it seems so deeply unserious, but also it's gaslighting. It's trying to make you believe something that is at odds with everything that you see in front of you, isn't it? There, there's no comparison between a backyard tussle or you know, getting getting down with someone at, in a schoolyard and an attempted murder. And everyone should be able to look at this situation and have thoughtful commentary about how awful it is that there even is a situation where this one girl is attacking her, another girl, where there are adults involved, where a police officer has to make that kind of decision. But to just make up ridiculous things like acting like it's normal for two teenagers to try to kill each other, that's not normal. And if it is normal, you know, there's something wrong with that as well. Uh, Joe, uh, one more thing I wanted to bring up to you. Uh, this uh, interesting story from the Washington Examiner about Politico sending an email, sending a letter to their own uh, writers saying essentially that they cannot use the term crisis when describing the border, despite the fact that the president himself has actually used this word. Uh, to me, this seems like a classic example of the media trying to reframe a story that they don't like in ways that they would prefer it to exist. This type of thing, I'm sure, goes on behind the scenes, but knowing that it's going on at a major publication like Politico, shouldn't there be a response from readers that basically says, you know, aren't you trying to gaslight us? Aren't you trying to reflect a, a certain perspective that you would like to exist as opposed to the reality? Oh, Ben, I wouldn't even use crisis either. I agree with Politico. It's a catastrophe going on at the border right now. When you see facilities at 17 times their capacity during a pandemic, when you see reports of young girls possibly being sexually abused in these facilities. When you see 20,000 unaccompanied migrant children now in U.S. custody and one facility in Houston having to be closed because it was so dangerous, uh, yeah, I, I think crisis definitely applies. Catastrophe does. And for Politico to try to downplay this, I'd like to see the justification around that. What words should we use here, Politico? Because this <laughs> is something that obviously is very problematic, probably the biggest issue facing the Biden administration, and they're providing cover by playing word games when it's not a game down at the border. It's a very, very serious situation, Ben. Molly Hemingway, Joe Concha, you, what you do when it comes to media criticism is one of the most important things that we have in terms of our conversation in this country. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.